Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and this is stage 20 of the Tour de France. 40 kilometer individual time trial. And when you look at the profile, it looks kind of flat at the beginning. Then it has two climbs that are about one and a half kilometer each. The last one is going to summit with about 250 meters ago, a little chicane and then a sprint into the finish. Now, originally when they released this profile, I thought it was going to be pretty flat, but today is anything but flat when you look at the course proper and you see all the riders out there. They're dropping down descents, climbing up hills. There's lefts, there's rights, there's roundabouts. There's all kinds of chaos and the road is super narrow. So don't think this is going to be an easy course today. When the riders start leaving the ramp, I want you to focus on Mikhail Berg because he's going to set the fastest time for UAE Team Emirates here on stage 20. He's in the hot seat, but he's got some talented riders behind him because it's Enios double time trial world champion, Filippo Ghana, and he is flying. Guys, he's going to catch not one, but two, three riders up the road. First rider to catch is going to be Andreas Bagioli from Quick Step. He's going to dislodge him quickly and go right by him. Next rider is the ex Road World champion, Mads Pedersen. He's flying past Mads Pedersen. And then when we come up the last climb with 1.5 kilometers to go, he's got one more rider in his sight, and it's DSM Alberto Denesi. Filippo Ghana's got a lead, and he's going to go all the way up to the top, accelerating hard, straight away back in the TT position. He'll cross the line to put himself in the hot seat for Team Enios. His time when he crossed the line, a minute and 41 seconds, better than the UAE Team Emirates rider Mikhail Burke. Now, Filippo Ghana's in the hot seat, but we still got time trial specialists. We still have Tade Bagachar back there. We still have Garen Thomas. We still have Jonas Vinigo in the race leader's yellow jersey, and we still have Wout Van Aert. And everybody that's been been watching the Tour de France knows Wild Van Aert can put on a show for the individual time trial because he won this stage last year. Now, next rider to come off, off the line is going to be Stefan Bissinger from EF Education. He gets just about 10 kilometers into his TT, and his bike's tired and has had all it can handle. If the rear derailleur goes into the lockup mode, it won't shift, so EF Education rider's got to pull over. He gets a fresh bike, a big push, and then as we see the cameras further up the road, he needs some water, and he's got Oliver Legac from FDJ next to him. He asks him for some water, and Oliver Legac hands over his bottle. We see Stefan Bisger take a drink and hand it back. And while that was happening, a third rider comes into the picture here at the individual time trial. It's Mate Mohoric from Barre Victorious. As Mate Mohoric gets up there, he looks over to the right. He's like, that's a pretty rare scene. It's not that often that you see two riders sharing a water bottle at an individual time trial. And now when you're looking at it from our view, it looks even funnier because you got three riders side by side on an individual time trial. Bahrain Victorious has had enough looking around, and Mate Mohoric is going to accelerate. He's going to leave the two riders behind until Stefan Bissinger decides with that drink of water, he's got some more legs. He'll hunt down Bahrain Victorious rider, and then he'll pass Mate Mohoric. Now we go up to the final climb here on stage 20, and Mate Mohoric is dropping Stefan Bissinger. It's kind of a comical scene, and that'll probably be about where it, the comical ends here on stage 20, because now we're going to go back to the GC favorites and the big stage race favorites. Wild Van Aert, he's leaving the ramp, and we know Wild Van Aert's a player. He's accelerating fast on the pedals, and when he comes through the first time check, he's up seven seconds on Filippo Ghana's time. By the second time check, he's up 25 seconds on Filippo Ghana's time, and now he starts catching his own riders because it's Nick Schultz from Bike Exchange that's in his sights. Nick Schultz doesn't want to get passed by Wild Van Aert. He's trying hard back there to hang on. Nick Schultz will hang on for two, three kilometers until finally Nick Schultz come off. Wild Van Aert, who over the third time check, lost a couple seconds to Filippo Ghana going down to 23. But now with this last six kilometers being the most difficult here on stage 20, Wild Van Aert's throwing in everything. He's going up the last 1.5 kilometer climb here on stage 20, and he's accelerating out of the saddle when he crests with about 300 meters to go. It's a flat run into the finish. He'll sit back in the aerodynamic position and then he'll start sprinting again once he gets close to the line. Drop back in the TT position and crosses the line 42 seconds up on Filippo Ghana's time. So he's ahead here at the Tour de France stage 20. Now we still got some GC favorites back there because when we look at the ramp it's Garen Thomas from Team Enos. Garen Thomas having a solid Tour de France sitting on the podium here in third position when today's stage starts. 
Now the Ineos rider. I expected some good racing out of Ineos on today's individual time trial, but not this good because when he crosses the first time check, he's only four or five seconds behind Wild Van Aert's time from Jumbo Visma. Now we got the other two favorites leaving, first and second on the general classification. Tade pagacha has got a point to prove. He lost the race leader's jersey on stage 11. He can't win it here on stage 20, but there's still pride on the line for the Slovenian. He's accelerating as fast as he can, and when he comes through the first time check, the Slovenian's up by one second over Wild Van Aert's time. He's in the hot seat with the first time check being completed here at the Tour de France. Not going to be there too long because it's the yellow jersey, Jonas Vinigo, that's following quickly behind him and when Jonas comes around this first time check he's up seven seconds on Tadej Pogacar's time that means he's up eight seconds on Wout Van Aert his teammate now when we start looking at the fight here for the stage G Thomas is still putting in some solid time at the second time check he's still just about five six seconds thereabouts on Wout Van Aert's time and he'll catch his rider in front Davide Godou from FDJ he'll pass Davide Godou who is realistically having a solid ride here on stage 20, but he was fourth on the general classification and now the Enos rider is dropping the FDJ rider. When Garen Thomas crosses the line, it's not enough to dislodge Wout Van Aert from Jumbo Visma, but he'll cross the line 32 seconds to put himself in second place on today's stage 20. Now there's still two favorite riders behind him, Tade Pagacha, who's flying, but losing time at the second time check. When he crossed the second time check, he was 13 seconds down on Wout Van Aert, and when he crossed the third time check he was 20 seconds back on Wow Van Art. Now we go back to the race leader's yellow jersey at the second time check he's still up. He's still up on Wow Van Art, which means he's up on Tade Pagacha which means Jonas Vinigo's trying to win the stage here on the individual time trial at the Tour de France to get himself not one not two but three stage race wins here at the Tour de France at while wearing the race leader's yellow jersey. Now Jonas Vinigo's flying on the pedals when he comes through the third time check he's one second up on Wow Van Art started at seven now it's down to one it's gonna be a nail biter here on stage 20 of the Tour de France Wow Van Art still has a shot at winning Jonas Vinigo still accelerating fast and when we get under just about under three and a half kilometers to go there's a split screen we see Wow Van Art and we know at this point in time that Jumbo Visma rider Jonas Vinigo is going down the technical descent before he starts the final climb we see Wow Van Art in the picture he's going whoa whoa slow it down big guy Stage 20 of the Tour de France 2020. Primoz Roglic lost his stage. Don't give this up on the descent. But then he gives a little smile and he knows Jonas Vinigo has got the win here at the Tour de France. Only problem is Jonas Vinigo with 2.5 kilometers to go. He's going in this left bend. He went into it proper all the way from the right as he goes across the bump in the road though. The front of these TT bikes can get a little squirrely and it does. All of a sudden that's causing Jonas Vinigo to adjust his position on the TT bike and he's drifting fast all the way to the outside of this left bend turn. As he drifts further out to the right side of the road he's in the gravel just a hair and he has no more room to play because there's a cliff on the right side and it's a rock wall just there after it now I don't know how he did it but Jonas Vinigo saves his Tour de France right here at this moment it was almost gone and Jonas Vinigo comes off the gravel back onto the pavement and somehow has kept his TT bike up now after that we'll see Jonas Vinigo from Yama Visma he's still accelerating down this down this descent and as we look forward it's Tadej Pogacar and Tadej Pogacar started the final climb he's accelerating hard on the pedals but it's not going to be enough to dislodge Wout Van Aert here on stage 20 because the Slovenian lost 27 seconds to Wout Van Aert he was up by one second on the first time check crossed the line 27 seconds down so we know Wout Van Art put on a big display going up over these two climbs with six kilometers to go in the stage. Now you got to wonder what's happened with Jonas Vinigo because he was leading, then he gave up the lead by about four seconds before he almost crashed. Now he's coming up the final climb, still accelerating on the pedals all the way until about 100 meters to go on today's stage. Then he sits up, eases off the gas. He's smiling when he crosses the line and it's his Belgium teammate, Wal Van Aert, the winner here of stage 20's individual time trial that's out there to greet the Tour de France winner in the race leader's yellow jersey if he can hold his bike up right through tomorrow's cobblestones on the Shams that is they're out there they're patting each other on the back as Jonas Vinigo passes by it's by his Belgium teammate Wout Van Aert he'll go up to his family that's sitting up there with his little kid big hugs kisses all around for the race leader's yellow jersey and Wout Van Aert's got tears to his eyes this has been a great racing here in the 22 Tour de France it doesn't get any better than this 
You know, in this video, with that fantastic ride here on stage 20, took a big risk coming down the descent. I'm all for going 100% to try to win the individual time trial because when you have this kind of form for Jonas Vinigo, you got to try to win at every moment you can because this doesn't always come around. It's not as easy as all the fans sitting at home watch. It's incredibly rare to have this kind of form and to be able to beat a rider like Tadej Pogacar. Now, I want to show something about the tactics when you start looking at Jumbo Visma. It's easy to see with Wild Van Aert's three stage wins. With Jonas Vinigo's two stage wins, with Laporte's stage win, with their KOM jersey, with their green jersey, and with the race leader's yellow jersey, it's easy to look at Jumbo Visma and go, wow, they dominated this Tour de France. Guys, that's really not the way it's been. Tade Pogacar has won three stages here, and Jumbo Visma had to do massive amount of work and hope for a lot of things to fall in place. Jonas Vinigo climbed with the Slovenian throughout all the mountain stages, and he was able to time trial, as we saw in stage one individual time trial, and here with this 40 kilometer time trial, that he can time trial with the Slovenian Tade Pogacar. But I want to highlight things because this is the butterfly effect and it's all about tactics. It needs mistakes done by Tade Pogacar. There was mistakes done by Jumbo Visma being too aggressive through those first eight stages. Then we start getting into stage 11. Tade Pogacar has the race leader's yellow jersey with 39 second lead. Take some bad mistakes from Tadej Pogacar to weaken his legs, forget to eat, crack on the final climb, and then Jumbo Visma with their superior numbers and with Jonas Vinigo's superior form here at the Tour de France from everyone else, especially Tadej Pogacar on that stage 11 after he hunger bumped. He's able to go up there, steal the jersey, put so much time into Tadej Pogacar and UAE team Emirates who were depleted because of COVID that now all of a sudden Jumbo Visma looked like the force and a dominating force here at the Tour de France. They were, it's easy to see that, but it's easy to forget that Yumbo, that UAE team members, Tade Pogacar, every bit as good as Jonas Finigo. If I bring you all the way back to stage one, we thought nobody could ride with Tade Pogacar. I don't want you to forget that there's still riders here that could ride with Jonas Finigo. And don't forget Primoz Roglic. Remember, he crashed on stage five. He's the teammate of Jonas Vinigo. So when we look at next year's Tour de France, there's all kinds of action, and you got to make remember to like and subscribe to the Butterfly Effect because I'm here to tell you how it is. Congratulations, Jumbo Visma, on your 1-2 on the stage. That was a big result here late in the Tour de France. Tadej Pogacar comes through for third, 27 seconds back. Garen Thomas, fourth on the stage. The Enios rider is on form. He's third on the general classification. Fifth on the stage, Filippo Ghana that held in to keep a top five here on stage 20. Now when we look at the general classification favorites, Vlasov gained a bunch of time to move up in the top five. Bardet moved up one spot, so the top 10 shuffled a little bit when you're talking fifth back to top 10. So make sure you take a peek at the results here at the Tour de France. Tomorrow, stage 21, last stage of the Tour de France, and we always know it's a big showdown against the big sprinters here at the Tour de France. So make sure you guys like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon on the next edition of the Butterfly Effect.